my life. So I, um, I talk about this a lot, but um, one of the mistakes a lot of people make in, in terms of business is they think that the key is the knowledge that you have about the service that you provide. Um, certainly that is a key element to building a successful business. But it is not the main key element to making sure you stay in business and that your business thrives. The number one key in business is, is how effective are you at marketing your business. It's all about uh, who do you know and being able to get in front of people consistently. It's, uh, man, but so many people avoid this because there's fear of rejection. Uh, you know, what are people going to think? Um, you know, it's just easier to do administrative stuff or focus on busy work. Um, it's real easy to be away from the house for 8, 10, 12 hours a day. But are you really doing real work? Real work is prospecting. It's generating new relationships with people. It's, it's uh, making contact with folks and inviting them to take a look at what you do. Um, it's sitting down with people and, and interacting and, and uh, inviting them to take a deeper look, you know, what, what we refer to as the one-on-one, -on -one, the initial introduction of, hey, this is what I do and I'd like to, I'd like to explore this further with you and, and you take a look at what I do professionally. Um, that's what really constitutes work and people avoid that. That's, that's, uh, that's what I've witnessed over and over and over again. The only difference between myself and the next guy is that I didn't avoid it. Um, I focused on that as my primary objective. Now, in, in our model, in what we've established as our system, um, you, you essentially need to identify um, some prospective people that, that might be interested in doing what we do, uh, make contact with those folks, um, and set up a time to sit down, and then present, do a one-on-one -on -one uh, presentation, an introduction to what we do, and and this this is key because an email won't work, a text message won't work, a phone call won't work. Um, you're going to run much less effective numbers that way. But people do those things because they want to avoid the one-on-one -on -one interaction, right? They're, everyone's always looking for a shortcut. The best shortcut is just to do it right the first time, you know. And so, um, so we do a one-on-one. -on -one. Now, in most businesses, you'd then be left to yourself. But in our system here, what we then uh, encourage you to do is to invite them out to the office for our seminar, which we refer to as the financial workshop. And now this gives an opportunity for somebody to come out and see what we do in more detail from a different perspective, and we're going to put some of our very best people uh, in front of them. And what this is going to help do is, is that second individual is going to reconfirm some of the things that you've told them, and it's going to lend to the credibility of, of the offer. And suddenly somebody's going to go, oh, man, this is, you know, this is impressive. And then you have the opportunity to follow up with them, right, and, and now make them a client, get referrals, and continue to, to generate a new business. Now, the numbers that we talk about, and this is one of the things I, I want to really cover with you this morning because every now and again I cover this, but it's kind of been a, it's been a little bit, are numbers that we throw out there. Is that if you identify 25, 25 people that are qualified, that's the key element there is qualified prospects. If you identify 25, and what do we mean by qualified? I mean... You know, we're in the financial services industry, right? Investments, retirement, insurance, you know, debt management, estate planning. Uh, if, if you're in that business and you spend your time talking to uh, the 18-year-old running the snow cone shack, probably not the best way to market yourself, right? So you want to be dealing with people that are 25 years or older, married, gainfully employed, those are the three top elements that, that 
somebody with those circumstances is going to begin to think about their future and planning financially. So I want to ask you this, and I want you to write down your own numbers, because I'm going to ask you for these numbers in a second. We always say, if you identify 25 people that are qualified, half of those, you make contact with those people, half of those people uh, will end up, uh, we'll say about 13 of them is what we say, a little more than half of those will say, sure, I'll sit down and do a one-on-one -on -one presentation with you, right? And then out of that, we say that, that about half of those people become clients. In this case, we'll go a little less, we'll say five. Five become clients in this, in this process. Um, and, and when you make someone a client, you're going to get referrals. And on average, you should be able to get about 10 referrals per client, which is 50 total. Well, now that's 50 more people you can talk to, which means out of that process, you're going you're gonna to end up with now 26 new people to sit down with and, and 10 new clients uh, just from that referral base, right? And I'm just focusing on this marketing side to generate a clientele and so forth. Um, in, in, in your opinion with your own business, there's a couple of questions I, I have for you. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to provoke some thought before I ask you the question. For me, these numbers are not true. For me, if I contact 25, of course I've been doing this a while, and I'm damn good at it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit down with more than 13. But even if I just sit down with 13, I'm going to do business with more than five. Um, and I'm capable of getting more than 50 referrals. Um, but that's just developing a skill set over time. But let me ask you a question. Are these numbers reasonable for you? I mean, if you contact 25 qualified people, you sit down with 13, do you feel like it's reasonably in the ballpark that if you sat down with 13 and did one-on-ones that you could, you could turn five of them into clients? Or is it a different number? Is it higher? Is it lower? What is it? Jace, higher or lower? Higher. Higher? So Jace, uh, Jace is saying that, that his number is higher than this. John? Higher. higher. So we got, we got two votes there. Don? I'd say it's higher. About even? Rocky? Okay, so about even. We got two there. Chris Olson, you online? I am. What is it for you? So if I contact uh, 25 people, <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm going to do uh, about half uh, on one of months. And then how many clients would you get? And then, um, what was that? How many clients would you get? Well, I get about half of those to the DPM, and then two thirds of those would become clients. Okay. So we're still looking at similar numbers, right? How about Luis? Luis, will you get yeah. more? Luis, will you get more than five clients out of out of uh, twenty a uh, top twenty five? Uh, yes. Okay. The the area the area that I was struggling with in that process would probably be the referral. Okay. So this is this is what I'm provoking here, right? I mean we've. We've gone through several of you. I would imagine Brent is pretty well the same thing, and uh, you know a couple others that, that we haven't asked. But uh, you know, just pulling this group, my my main thing I wanted to do is just confirm that the numbers are the numbers are the numbers are the numbers. You can't you you re really these are fair numbers. Um, they're they're way underestimated for me. They're underestimated for many of you. But at the end of the day, here's the second question. If you do business with somebody, what kind of production is that worth for you on average? I want you to think of the number. You go out and write business, and you think about the last five or the average that, that you think it's worth. What do you think the average case is that you write personally? I want you to put a number in your head right now. and and. 
I'm going to ask each, I'm going to ask several of you what that number is, and then we'll we'll come up with with a factor. Maybe I'll have to throw mine out to keep this uh, average more reasonable. But what is your average point sale? Uh, average commission sale, uh, Jace points. About two thousand. Two thousand, Rocky. Two, John. Probably twenty five hundred. Twenty five. Like my my split or like the whole deal? The whole deal. The whole deal, probably closer to three. Three? Chris Olson? Yeah, it'd be about three. Three? Luis? About twenty five. Okay. Brent, what do you think your point average is? Okay, I I think it's fair. We had a couple of threes in there. You know, mine is like five or six thousand minimum, might be more. Um, so we say twenty five. Does everyone think that's fair enough? Twenty five. Now, if if the average case is worth about twenty five, and you're a senior associate. We're going to say, on average, you're generating about $1,250 per transaction, about $1,200, right? So, so here's, here's what I really want you to, to work on mentally. It's, it's, not that, it's not that this is worth $1,200. It's not that the sale is worth $1,200. It, it's probably wiser of you from a business standpoint. Of course, the main thing is what? Is it the money? No. The main thing is that we helped, we helped the family, right? We made a difference in somebody's life significantly, right? But, but from a business standpoint, I think there can be a problem just thinking, man, I, you know, I'm only making money if I'm right in business. Well, true, but... You can also reverse engineer this and, and really try to get into your head that it's not just $1,200 for a transaction. It's also about $100 per one-on-one. -on -one. It's also about $50 per contact. You with me on this? You are you you need to be realizing that when I'm out doing not busy work, not administrative stuff, and listen, you know, some of that is obviously necessary. But a lot of it is a lot of it is just you want to feel busy and look busy, so it's kind of a joke for me, right? When when people ask me, what are you up to? I say, I'm trying to look busy. Um, it's a joke because I, because it is a joke. Um, you're either busy or you're not. And, and the real busy work is meeting with people, right? And so I, I want you to be thinking to yourself, how much money do I need to make today? Do you guys know what that number is? I mean, to pay your bills, how much money do you make, do you need to make today? Let's figure this out for a second because um, I, I don't, I don't, I, you know, I'm not crazy about knowing the math for a, for a job, but let's do some math real quick. Who can, who can do a little bit of this for me? Don, you going to dial this out? Sure. So if you're making, I mean, what does it take for you to pay your bills monthly? Jace, what do you need just to pay the bills? 3600 3600 4000 4000 John? 1500 yeah. That's that's awesome, right? Rocky? 3000 Let let let's go with three grand. I think that's uh that's about right. Yeah, you know, I meet with people all the time. If you're just paying the minimum expenses, you know, you're usually gonna be between twenty five hundred and four is what I see most often. So let's say let's say let let's go a little higher, say thirty two fifty. So thirty two fifty divided by, let's figure out what you have to earn hourly or daily. So how would we do that?
How many days a week should you be working the business? Five. At least five, you would think? Yeah. I mean, I would be doing that if I were where you're at, but, uh, you know, I'd be doing five and a half or six. Um, but um, but let's say five, you know, so, so, so divide that 3250 by what? 20? 20 working days? Y'all with me? So what? 16250. 16250. So how many contacts do you have to do? If you divide that by 50 bucks, how many how many contacts do you have to do daily to pay your bills? Four. 3.25. Okay, so you gotta you gotta knock out to pay your bills, you gotta knock out four contacts a day. And that'll pay you about two hundred bucks. We're stepping it up so Jace is now paying his bills. Because yours is a little higher than the 32, right? <laughs> so you got to do four contacts a day to pay your bills. Isn't that amazing? Uh, does anyone have any recollection of the advice I've given about uh, daily setting of appointments? Three to five. Three to five? Wow, it comes out at four. Isn't that amazing how the math works, right? I mean, think about this. Forget about everything else. Just every single day, do what you got to do to pay the bills. And do it consistently. How big of a deal is it to set up, you know, to make a few contacts in a day? It's not a big deal at all. It's just a function of sitting down and getting it done. That's it. Now listen, we've got some big stuff going on right now, right? We've got... Um, we got a contest happening right now. Does anyone know what that is? Cruise. So we've announced a cruise. So this contest already started. Started in August, runs through the end of November, and uh, and those that qualify will go on a cruise. Um, anybody who's going on that deal? Yes, right. I want that. Um, gosh, to do that. All you got to do is probably just focus on setting up three to five appointments a day. That's it. Don't worry about everything else. Just focus on the main thing. It's not that difficult. A lot of days in my career, I was focused on trying to get in front of eight to ten people a day. And just packing it. Just, you know, I kind of looked at it as kind of two days in one. So during the day I was trying to get in front of three or four or five people and then in the evening get in front of three or four or five people. So you're trying to hit eight to ten a day. And that's your one-on-ones, your interviews, your FNAs, your closes, your fast starts. You're trying to have eight to ten appointments a day. But in order to do that I had to have two or three times a day where I was focused on contact. And what that usually was was some time to make calls on my own, from my own market, making phone calls with, with a couple, one or two people in, in my team, and then being willing to do drop-bys in the evening. And by doing that, I was constantly able to keep my pipeline full. It's not difficult as long as you break it down and kind of have a daily plan. And if you do that, man, huge things can happen, right? From there, you'll continue to kill these numbers. I guarantee you, you know, you'll do better than that. Now, what's what's five times this uh, 1,200 mark? Yeah, this is 6,000. Um, and, and what is that annually? 72,000. And that's not killing it. That's at a senior associate contract. Realistically, if you're doing this consistently, I bet you're making 150 range. I'm just telling you. And life is good. Life is life is good. I mean, I don't think that's what you're dreaming about, but I think for most people, making 150 is a good start. Right? 
This is just some basics, and I'm, I'm underselling it to you. I'm underestimating. But, because this isn't factoring in the, the reality. Um, my experience is that if I'm doing this activity consistently, I, I shouldn't say I because my numbers would be better than this, but if, if the average person is doing these numbers consistently, my experience is that they're also going to average a couple of rollovers a month for a total of probably about 80,000 to 120,000 a month in roller business. You get one with 40 or 50,000, another one with, you know, 20,000, you know, and, and that's one month. You get another one one month for 106,000, another one for, you know, 40,000. But on average, that's what I've seen. So you throw that in there on top of this. It's like another 8,200 bucks. Yeah. So what I want you to be thinking is uh, every day that you don't hit your three to five, it, it, it means that, that every day you don't do that, that means there's a day two weeks from now, three weeks from now, where you're not going to make what you need to do to pay your bills. So every day you decide to do that today, so let, let's look forward. What's three weeks from today? What's the date? Ninth. The ninth of September? Yep. How many of you um, are okay with not paying your bills on the ninth of September? Does that day not matter particularly to you? You want to take that day off for income? How many of you feel like you'll probably have some cost of living on the 9th of September? Any, any projected cost of living? Plan on living under a roof? Putting food in your face hole? School starting back up. School starting back up this week and next. You want to pay your bills three weeks from now. Then today, do what you got to do to pay the bills. I think this is a good way to see it, right? And every time you set up an appointment, you know, I, 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 I'm not, I'm not uh, in any way um, coming down on Luis, but he made a statement that just stood out to me a little bit. Um, and this, there's really nothing wrong with the statement, but there is potentially something wrong if you keep repeating certain things over and over and over again. So Luis was asked something to the effect of how you doing on your 10,000 points for the month or whatever. And um, I think the comment was something to the effect of, well, I had some things uh, go south or I had some things not go through. Um, welcome to business. That is the case all the time. If a dentist wakes up every day and says, his, his spouse says when he gets home, or, or her spouse says when she gets home, how did your day go? And he says, well, I had some things not go through. What's the spouse going to say? Uh, no, duh. You're a dentist. People cancel their appointments. If a doctor comes home and says the same thing, it's the same thing. It, you know, it's, it's business. Stop focusing on what didn't go through and start focusing on what you're putting in the front end. You just need to, you need to give up fighting the law of averages. You need to give in and realize that that's just business. You can't be a major league hitter and expect to hit the ball every time you get up to the plate. The best hitters on the planet are going to strike out 7 out of 10 times. But if they focus on the strikeout, what then? You're going you're gonna to get up in your head, and you're going to have more strikeouts. Listen, I'm telling you, this is what I'm talking about is gold. I was watching a Real game, a Real Salt Lake soccer game, uh, the other night with my boys. And one of the guys was interviewed. Uh, there's, a, there's a newer player on, on the team this year. Um, and Sam was being interviewed. He had been, he'd been, uh, he'd had eight goals for the season 
and he got injured, and he was out for several weeks. And he was back in on his first game. This was, I think, Wednesday of last week. He was back in. And uh, he scored in that first game. He scored um, in the first half. And the interviewer at the half said, uh, what does it mean for you to come back in and be able to score a goal on your first game back? And the guy, English isn't his first language, but he basically said, it's good to score. It's good for confidence for a guy who's supposed to score to score. Yeah. What a dumb question. No duh. <laughs> but, but if he focuses on the shots he doesn't make, it's going to get up in his head, it's going to affect his confidence, and he's not going to be able to perform. He's got to be willing to continue to take shots. You know, I, I still play every Friday. And um, let me tell you the number one key to being a goal scorer. I, I played center forward my entire life. Uh, so let me tell you about the game we had Friday. This was one of those days where you go back to the glory days and you're remembering, you know. Uh, so uh, we, have ten, we have 30 seconds left in the game. The, the game is tied 9-9. Uh, I'm sitting on three goals so far, you know, a hat trick. Um, which, if you're a soccer player, that's a great day, right? So I'm thinking, okay, I'm sitting on three goals. It's tied. We have 30 seconds left. Uh, guy on our team makes a mistake, gives up the ball. These guys score. Now, with 10 seconds left on the clock, we're back at the half line with the ball. And we're down with 10 seconds left. We're, we're going to lose in 10 seconds. Uh, one of the buddies on my team taps it to me and says, dude, just take it. And so I dribble, I juke, uh, I dribble past a couple of defenders. I take a left-footed shot. I'm not left-footed. I take a left-footed shot from fairly far out, right in the corner. Less than 10 seconds left in the game, tie it up, my, my team cheers, an exciting moment, right? Uh, at that point, if in that 10 seconds you're focused on the last shot that you didn't make, you're focused on the one that didn't happen, you're going to hesitate and you might not take that shot, right? Um, you're going to get up in your head. You have to be able to, to, to zero everything out of your head and focus on this one shot, right? You cannot focus on the shots missed. And, and it's the same thing in business. You can't focus on the stuff that didn't go your way. You have to focus on the activity on the front end and you have to focus on the current moment, the current opportunity. And when it doesn't happen, you have to have a next mentality. Next, next. And when it does happen, next, next. The, the transaction happening and the transaction not happening, same thing. Next, next, next. Does that make sense? You have to do that. Now, I've been engaged before with people who don't play center forward. And a couple of times, most of the crew that I play with, the guys that I play with long term, most of these guys have played at least high school and more often than not college. So these are, these are players. But on occasion, we've had somebody come in that hasn't had as much experience. You can tell in a hurry when they get on the, the, the you know, the field with, with people that know how to play. Um, but on occasion, uh, I've heard a guy say something like, man, why'd you take that shot to me or somebody else or whatever? That's the wrong flipping thing to say when you're on the field. There are some times where a guy takes a shot he shouldn't have taken. But let me tell you, in that game, at the height of that game, you got to take the shots. And sometimes it may not be the best shots, but the last thing you want to do is discourage anybody from taking a shot. True or false, Jace? It's true. they got to have the confidence to take a shot. Um, you know, if repeatedly somebody's taking a shot that, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, then you're going you're gonna to have that conversation after the game or at practice, but not during the game. I mean, if you got that bad, you just take them out of the game. But most of the time, you want people to have confidence just to take a crack at the goal. 
And the ideal thing is not only take a crack at the goal, but force the goalie to, to make a save. Put it on frame, right? You kick it 20 feet outside the, the frame, then that doesn't really do much. But at least put it on frame and make the guy, you know, save a shot. The same thing applies in a business. You, you cannot be afraid to get up and just take a crack. But in order to do that, you have to keep your confidence high. Your confidence is going to be higher the more times you set up appointments and you give yourself a chance to take a shot. The less times you're willing to get on the ball or set up appointments, the lower your confidence level will be because you're going to have to desperately try to score in the limited amounts of time you've given yourself a chance. So the higher the numbers, the better your opportunities and the more your confidence is. Does this make sense to you guys? The number one thing any of you needs to do is just do the daily activity. The results will follow. That's it. How hard is it today to do what you got to do to pay the bills? Three to five. Now, if for some reason you can't see yourself doing that every day, then pick two or three days in a week. Right? Instead of doing three uh, a day, five days a week, do seven or eight on a Monday, right? Seven or eight on a Wednesday. Have your days, have your times. Statistically speaking, you're better off if you can just develop the habit of doing three to five. Because the habit eventually will make it easier. Keep you fresh and it'll be less and less difficult over time. But I'll tell you this, the fear of the phone call, the fear of the contact, is, is way lesser than the benefits of doing what it takes. At some point, you'll look back and go, holy crap, that was worth 10 times the price I paid. I promise you that. And, it, and, and here's the thing. It comes in different types of rewards, right? Uh, I guarantee you that um, maybe, maybe, maybe now that I say it, maybe I'll think this. But in, when I'm in Pebble Beach, uh, when is that, next week or is that when it is, next week? Uh, and I'm sitting in a $15 million house on the golf course at Pebble Beach, I'll be thinking to myself, yeah, this was worth some phone calls. And, and maybe even more so, I mean, or equally, another three weeks after that, when I'm sitting on a $3.5 million yacht, I'll probably think, yeah, this was worth it. Right? So... How many calls do you have to make today to pay your bills? You're getting paid per call. How many do you want? If it was really that easy, you just have to pick up the phone, make contact, try to set up an appointment, and, and I'm gonna hand you a $50 bill every time you do it. You're just gonna get a $50 bill handed to you. How many of you'd make, how many calls would you make today? You make 100 or 200 calls today? Because it's literally that easy. You just got to click that in your head. All right? Okay, thanks, everybody.